morning y'all as promised i'm working on the 374 loading video from last week as you can see i'm in puerto rico it wasn't a planned trip last minute trip i was actually in new jersey and the load got delayed so instead of getting on a plane and going home i got on a plane coming down here and why not work on videos at the beach so i thought i'd give you guys a running commentary of the loading of the 374 from last week with the trailer set up. So here we go. So we went down with the Jeep stacked up, the back axle flipped over and the flip on the gooseneck flipped over. The reason we fold everything up is to get the trailer down to 53 feet. With everything folded out on the ground, it's actually an oversized trailer. We use the forklift to lift off the Jeep, flip the axle, flip the gooseneck, and we try to get everything we need with the forklift done as soon as possible because they actually charge us for the time with the forklift. These forklift guys at the port, they do these trailer assemblies all day, every day. So they're pretty good. They know exactly what they need to do. You see here to flip the back axle, he's just gonna slide his forks just under the tires and he's just gonna lift that axle up and over. No need to hook any chains anywhere or anything else. So this is a Talbert trailer with just a regular flip axle on the back. You need a machine to flip the axle up and over. Some of the new trailers, it is an option to have a hydraulic cylinder to flip the axle over. The downside of it is extra weight on your trailer. I'm just trying to get the exact height here. We got to line them pinholes up perfectly. The pins fit in really snug and you got to get the holes perfectly lined up. One in, going over the other side, get the other one in. A lot of times you got to make a little adjustment to get the other side in. And there you go, slid right in.
You're gonna get them to come around front and flip that flip over on the gooseneck. I can do this myself with a truck if I have to, but it's just so much easier when you got the machine there, use the machine, and you can make any small adjustments you want to get those pinholes lined up after. Again, some of these trailers, it is an option to have a hydraulic cylinder in the front to flip this over. Again, it adds extra weight to your trailer. For us, weight is everything. The more your trailer weighs, the less payload capacity you have. some adjustment there get that pinhole lined up I said those pin holes they got to be lined up perfectly to get that pin in if they're not lined up perfectly it takes a little bit extra persuasion to get them in there get it a little bit more so we get the lock pin in the back around to the other side. And that's it, we are finished with the forklift. I still have a lot to do, but we can do everything else without the forklift. I could have used him to shim the trailer, but because he put the Jeep down right beside the trailer, it would have been an extra pain in the butt to get in there, so I'll just do it myself. We'll go back and do all the steps that we skipped, get all the lock pins in, connect all the air lines and all the electrical wires.
Now these trailers only have one kingpin, so we gotta get that kingpin out and move it up to the front flip neck that we flipped over before. It's a little bit stuck in there, so I'm gonna use my tool. <laughs> So that kingpin's not locked in there or anything, I just gotta give it a little bit of persuasion, get it up and out, and just put it in the front hole. Just check the Jeep over. Usually you chain the axles up. It's a little bit easier on the suspension when you're lifting it up in the air. Put the Jeep under the main trader right away, hook everything up. It's not me who loaded this Jeep, it's not me who had it last, so I always like to get out and just check the height of it, make sure that nobody played with the dolly leg while they loaded it up on the trailer. If you high pin it, it adds an extra 15 minutes to half an hour to your morning if you didn't break anything.
we got everything set up, next up is we have to shim the trailer. These modular trailers, they're not made to have the same camber empty as running loaded. So for a 50 ton load, we're actually going to have to add about three quarters of an inch of shim to the back of the trailer. To do that without a forklift, we're going to lift it up as high as we can in the air. And I'm going to put about 12 inches of hardwood blocks under the back of the trailer and set the weight back down on the block so it actually opens up the modular separation and we can add some more shim in the back. The air valve on this trailer is up in the middle of the trailer because it's on the main trailer. So what I'm actually doing now is I'm going to override the air suspension and lift the back of the trailer up as high as we can. the air back down out of the back we're going to set the front of the trailer back down on the ground and it's going to separate in the middle where we put the hardwood blocks lift everything back up to get the hardwood blocks back out and Bob's your uncle the trader ship
tool away, we're done with the pull plug. Let's set this thing back on the ground. We can break the gooseneck off the front and we're ready to load our excavator. Disconnect the airlines and electrical wire. I usually do that first because if you do it last, you might forget to do it. And pretty much everyone in the RGN double drop business has ripped their airlines off one time in their career. I try to avoid that. Get the lock pin out. So this is an older trailer. Most trailers, when they're new, they have a hydraulic support arm under the gooseneck for when you remove the gooseneck from the trailer, it holds it up. Unfortunately, at Belmer, when they break, we don't repair them. We find that it's cheaper just to buy a hardwood block and it works almost as well as a hydraulic arm. So what I did is I pulled the head just about a foot there, you can see to separate the gooseneck from the trailer, but before it fell right down on the ground, now I'm going to air up the gooseneck so that our wood block comes into contact with the Jeep underneath and supports it so we don't drag it on the ground. Again, this process takes a few extra minutes compared to having a hydraulic support arm, but I guess hydraulic support arms just aren't in the budget.
just move the truck to the rear of the trailer just because the alley is a little bit narrow here. It gives us room to work in front of the trailer with the machine and we can still allow traffic to go around us. Again, I always get the question, why the D sign, why the oversized load sign? Well, that's because the D sign is the only sign which is legal in Quebec. The oversized load sign is not legal. It's a political thing. They don't want to offend anybody by having an English sign. However, the D sign is not accepted in the U.S., so we need to run the oversized load sign in the U.S. Every time when I get to the Quebec-U.S. border, I got to flip the sign around, D for Quebec, oversized load for the U.S. The excavator we're going to be loading is a Caterpillar 374. It's just under 13 feet wide and you're going to see there's only going to be about a quarter of the track sitting on the trailer. So I put outriggers out. It's safer going down the road. There's a lot of guys that say, oh, you don't need outriggers. If you're a real super trucker, you don't need to put them. I, it doesn't take any time to put them. It takes like five minutes max to put them out. I put them, then I have peace of mind the whole trip. So here's our machine, again, a brand new Caterpillar 374 excavator. Without the boom, without the counterweight on the back, it still weighs 50 tons, just under 13 feet wide at the tracks. Made in China, came in through the port of Baltimore, and we're gonna be taking it up to Montreal.
Check to make sure the battery switch is on before climbing up in. Now when I'm loading a 
rock truck or a front end loader, what I'm actually doing is looking down the middle of the trailer, right to the end of the trailer to get it lined up because you're sitting in the middle of the machine. But with an excavator, you're sitting offset. So what I actually find it easier to do is look at the edge of the trailer, line up the tracks with the edge of the trailer, and I just try to get the same amount of deck boards on either side.
reverse of what I did when we remove the gooseneck. I get it close so that the gooseneck's just sitting over the trailer. I'm gonna let the air down on the Jeep and it's gonna loosen up that block that is supporting it. loose we move the block right away so we don't forget it there put the lock pin back in reconnect the air and electrical Suspension. What I'm actually looking at is the front of the trailer that's in contact with the ground. When I first lift it up, you want to make sure that it lifts evenly. It's not just lifting on one side. It means that it's going to be sitting nice and level to go down the road. trailer actually has big shims which support the gooseneck going down the road. air up the trailer in the back we might as well clean the lights while we're back there machine's just a little bit far back. I've hauled these before. I've scaled them out before. 
And if I line the back of the machine up perfectly with the gooseneck, I know it's going to scale out perfectly. So what we're going to do is we're going to back the machine just up a little bit, get it lined up with the gooseneck there, and it should balance my weight pretty good. I always check my air gauges before I start tuning everything down. Just give it a double check. Make sure what the permits are ordered for. See what the air gauge is showing. Make sure we're balanced out. A lot of times if you release the brakes and move just a little bit, it'll take a little bit of weight off of it. Had a little bit of room on the air gauge, so I'm going to back it up just a little bit more, and that should be good. Now the GoPros are starting to run out of battery, so I'll just give you guys a quick peek at chaining this thing down. Again, the machine weighs 100,000 pounds, so I'm putting 10 half-inch chains on it, which means I'm chained for about 110,000.
and that's gonna be it there you go thanks for watching y'all if you haven't seen it already there's already a video on this channel of us hitting the road with this load enjoy the rest of your day i know i will